everyone. For today's video, we're gonna make a mini tutorial for you guys. This is actually one of our all-time favorite cosplay hacks that we like to use, and it's to solve the pain of how do you permanently attach things like armor and decor to your fabric. You know, you can't sew it, you can't glue it, so what do you do about it? This topic was requested by Coco Cosplay over on Instagram, and actually we use it all the time, from Beto's leggings to Bubblegum's bodice to Necromancer, and the best best part is, is that it is super easy and novice friendly. So be sure to subscribe, share this video with your friends who might find it useful, and we'll jump on in. So one of the biggest hurdles in being a mixed media type of cosplayer where you're combining fabric with armor, with FX, with stupid stuff is how do you attach all these things together? And what we've discovered is that things like glues, sewing Velcro, you know, they work really well for attaching one kind of material to itself, but not so great for attaching different kinds of materials with different properties. And really specifically for this video, attaching solid decor and armor to flexible fabric. Instead, what I found is that when we combine different materials, we're also going to want to combine different attachment methods. So let's say as an example, I want to attach Princess Kenny's armor flush against this piece of fabric. I want to get it a little closer than snaps or Velcro would allow, which, you know, those sometimes do work for big pieces of armor, but for little things like this, it can leave too much of a gap in my opinion, especially if you want it really close to your body. Similarly, a lot of strong glues work by soaking into the fibers, which is just gonna make my fabric really stiff and uncomfortable. But the bigger problem is that glue is not going to flex nearly as much as your fabric. So, you know, as you move throughout the day, that glue's grip is going to weaken and eventually your item is going to just pop off. Meanwhile, we all know that sewing items to shirts, leggings, cosplays, that all works really great because it's super secure and it gives you a lot of flexibility. But obviously, you know, we can't get a needle through a plastic piece of armor like this. So here's the solution. Instead of just using a single attachment method, we are going to combine these two methods together in order to work with both of our materials. First, we're gonna sew a solid hard base to the fabric, and then on top of that landing pad, we're going to glue our final decor piece. The result is a middle layer that has a rock solid glue hold on my armor that is also super securely attached to my fabric piece. Foam's a really great option for your base. It's super lightweight, it's sewable, it's cheap. For the foam route, I really, really, really recommend not just buying foam from the store, but instead look for an ultra dense thin Ava foam. And with my stuff, I usually use two millimeter Ava 70. This stuff has a short hardness of 70, which means it's gonna be twice as hard to rip as the typical Ava 38 that you find in the craft store. And, okay, I'm gonna like demo this for y'all, just to show you how, and I'm really trying, this is not like a joke. This stuff is very thick, it's really great for sewing, it's really great for stability. Now I'm like mad, I wanna do this. I'm gonna like help myself. All right, there we go. That is the only way you can get this stuff to tear. And the reason that is so important is that less dense foam is a lot more prone to tearing and you're really gonna need a base that stands up to the pressure and the tension of your stitches. You know, if the stitches are just gonna tear right through your foam, you're in big trouble and the whole base can fall off. So instead, go with something that you're really confident is not going to rip apart on you. If you can't find Ava 70, thicker foam can help or you could also reinforce it by backing it in something like felt. Actually, felt itself is a potential option all by itself, depending on the size and the weight of your item. Heat seal your foam and then place your cosplay fabric on yourself or onto a dress form if it's close to your size. You always want it to be stretched appropriately when it's time to stitch on the base. Remember, the stitches are gonna stretch a little bit, but not a ton. With Beidou's super stretchy thigh highs, that meant I really needed to be wearing them during the sewing process. Fortunately, this is really easy to do. Just whip stitch around the edges until the foam base is fully secure. Don't worry if you can see the stitches, they're gonna get covered up later. Then I added a little bit of barge contact cement to both the base and to my regular old Ava foam top layer. Take care here, a really secure glue hold is also super key, so make sure you apply it correctly with a light coating on both sides. Allow them to become tacky and then press into place. And here you go. Because the top decor is right on top of my base, all of those securing stitches are now completely covered up and it truly looks like an invisible attachment unless I shove my camera right up along the side. 
This method works for heavy objects too. You may be able to use dense foam for resin and plastic pieces, but I've always been a little paranoid and I haven't tried this myself. If you do, definitely let me know because I'm really curious, but for all of my big heavy pieces like bubblegum here, I instead create my base out of Warbla. Warbla is extremely sturdy and it's a great base for gluing other plastics to. But Regan, what planet do you live on where you can actually get a needle through Warbla? So this is true, but not when the Warbla is warm. Warming your plastic with a heat gun keeps it flexible and soft enough that it can actually be pierced with a needle. This is also a perfect time to mold your Warbler to perfectly fit your body at the point where you want to attach your object. Once cooled and hardened, just sew through your pre-drilled holes and then generously glue on your object. So both of Princess Bubblegum's chest pieces are glued on in this way and they are really stable and secure despite their size and frankly how rough I am with these. You can actually see a little bit of the warbler peeking out here as well as the securing stitches that tie it onto the corset so you can see exactly how this big monster is applied on here. And that's all there is to it. I hope you all enjoyed this little mini cosplay tip. If you did, let me know in the comments below and as always helping promote this by sharing with your friends and hitting the bell really does help us so much. Thank you all for watching.